Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Ad Project Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Joe Shellerud, and today I'm joined by Melissa Barnsdorf, also from Ad Advance. So, Melissa, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so for people who missed uh, the last episode that Melissa was on, so she's been on the podcast before. Um, Today, what we wanted to talk through is our overall Prime Day results and kind of key insights that we took away from Prime Day, looking throughout our full client mix. Um, We had a lot of great insights and then a lot of pieces that we can tie into other key events or key shopping periods, like the potential other Prime Day coming up before Q4, going into Q4, um, and then Q4 itself. Um, But before we jump into that, for people who missed the last podcast that you were on, Melissa, maybe give us a quick overview on you. Yeah, definitely. Um, So I would say prior to um, coming on board to do PPC, I worked um, 12 years in digital marketing and e-commerce. Um, and then decided to make the switch into PPC and um, just thoroughly enjoying um, kind of the full funnel approach, working through sponsored ads, um, through DSP, all levels of the DSP um, funnel. And, um, you know, really, really thoroughly enjoying my client relationships as well, working as a team with all of my clients and helping to optimize their accounts. Yeah. So Melissa gets to work with a t- number of different clients implementing these full mm-hmm. funnel structures, prepping for a prime day. So I figured she'd be an ideal guest to have on the podcast. So, you know, Melissa, as you look back at prime day, um, so what were some of the key takeaways that you saw this year when you were working with your different clients? Yeah, uh, I think there were a lot of a number of good lessons uh, that we learned from Prime Day that we can look to uh, incorporate, go forward, like you mentioned. Um, I think that probably the most evident lesson that we learned was just how important promotions really played to Prime Day. Um, we had a good client mix of those that ran promotions and those that didn't, so we were able to really get a good grasp on comparing the performance of those that ran promotions versus those that didn't. Uh, And the biggest takeaway, like I said, was when at an aggregate level, comparing the performance of all of our clients that ran promotions, what we saw was that there was a a three and a half times increase in AOV versus those that did not, where we were seeing uh, their And AOV is average order value. Average order value. Correct. Yep. 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 So total total sales. Yep. Exactly. Um, And those that did not run a promotion, we saw, you know, just from the general lift in traffic and the the higher um, purchase intent anyways, they did see a lift, but it was more along the lines of like a 1.4 times lift in AOV. So really, really strong lift um, in conversion rate um, stemming from those that ran promotions. So it speaks really strongly to how, how well the promotions worked. And, and the other thing, too, is the increase in conversion rate that we saw stemming from those that ran promotions. Uh, we were able to determine that um, conversion rate was about two times more likely to convert for those that ran promotions versus those that not. So, um, yeah, unsurprisingly, promotions yeah, really played a big there. part in Prime Day. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And so for for key events like Prime Day, um, mm-hmm. this year especially, we've seen people who were really focused on the deals. Yes. Um, so typically what we see for Prime Day is that, yep, deals get a lot of attention, but mm-hmm. we typically see a, a good uplift for all products. Um this year, much more skewed towards just the deal. So again, like yeah. a three and a half increase in average order value um, uh, uh, or average order volume versus a 1.4x increase for those yep. that weren't running deals. So a huge yep. change between the two. And then the conversion rate changes too. So mm-hmm. much higher conversion rate for those deals. And so for these yep. individual periods where people are looking for deals, um, they are, you know, th- th- that was key to success this year and really seeing a huge sales volume increase was those deals that correlate to these different events. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, notoriously, one of the largest shopping days of the year for Amazon, it's a, it's a very real factor that every account um, has to, has to take as a factor for something to consider. It may or may not make sense for them based on their margin or other, uh, objectives, but, um, it really was very, very clear that it is something that, that really should be considered very carefully, um, for these prime shopping timeframes on Amazon. Sure. Yeah. So what was some other key takeaways that you had, like as you were approaching prime day for those clients who really saw a lot of success, like Mm -hmm. what were some key best practices that you had or strategies that you implemented? Like as you were approaching it, what what were the the major items that you were focused on and looking at? Yeah. Um, I would say that the biggest thing, the biggest factor that really helped to, um, set me up for setting my client up for sex success was really the, um, the communication factor. It's so, so vital to keep that line of communication open. Um, what are they thinking in terms of promotions? What are their hero products that they really want to focus on promoting, um, for prime day? How is inventory level? Um, you know, so that we can effectively, if they're, if people are running out of inventory, I can successfully pull back on ad spend so that we can save that spend for when the inventory is there. And as we get closer to prime day. So, uh, the, the communication factor is first and foremost, the most important factor in successfully planning your strategy, I would say. Yeah. And some people miss this too, where like, if you're really getting ramped up for some of these key events, um, I, I know it sounds obvious, but just making sure that your advertising strategies are aligned with that. And so if you have a huge amount of inventory coming in for some of your hero products yep. and you're planning on promoting them in terms of like deals, mm-hmm. um, just making sure that you're fully aligned on, all right, here are my key goals yes. from a business perspective. Um, And sometimes it's easy as a business owner and I can relate just from like the seller side, thinking that everybody is fully on the same page with, all right, here's the key goals. I know the inventory, I know the products, here's Mm -hmm. exactly what I'm looking to do. Um, But taking that extra time to fully communicate, like here are my key goals, here are the KPIs that I'm looking at, here is how I define success. Um, cause many different clients define success differently too. Absolutely. Um, some very focused on margin, some very focused on top yep. line, some very focused on inventory levels and where those fall. Yep. And so I think that's a key thing is really taking a step back and like, all right, at the end of the day, if I look back at prime day, how do I f- define success? And it can yes. vary based off the products that you have too. Yes, absolutely. Um, th- and I can't say that enough, it, the, the clearer that you are with your objectives, the better handle that the PPC managers can have on making sure that we're aligned with your goals and that we're setting up the account in a way that is going to support those goals. Um, because like you said, everybody has different strategies. Some people are looking to really drive sales on prime day or these big shopping holidays, and they're not so much focused on margin. Some people, you know, still want to grow sales, but need to be making sure that they're aligned with their ACOS targets as well. Um, but if that objective isn't clear, um, it's just going to mean that we're not putting our best foot, best foot forward. We're not optimizing to the best way possible that's most aligned with your goals. Sure. Yeah. So what what were some other key things that you had going into it or that that you implemented during Prime Day? Um, I think that, you know, aside from having the overall goals outlined, um, having thing, having the plan communicated early on was so, so important because then what we were able to do was a series of kind of testing and learning different strategies, um, going into prime day. So we knew things that worked, um, you know, testing different, um, keyword or product targeting strategies, um, tapping into different category targeting. In some instances, um, if we're not running DSP, trying some different audience targeting so that we could capture a larger audience during Prime Day when there is more traffic running. Um, 
you know, some things even as simple as uh, if, uh, if a client gets new custom creative images or new video videos in, um, getting those up and running and going back to what I said earlier, getting them implemented early so that we can kind of line out and find the most appropriate bids and the most appropriate targets early on um, so that it's set up ideally when we hit Prime Day. Um, that's so, so key. So yeah, so those are some fun different strategies that we tried, but again, the focus of getting them set early to do that testing and learning early was uh, vital. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, and that, that's a key piece that you'll keep hearing us talk about yep. is that, you know, as you're approaching these peak periods, um, whether it's on the seasonality side, just in general, or the Q4 ramp up side, or especially for uh, major days where traffic really steps up like Prime Day, um, it's making sure that you have a solid foundation early. And it takes a while to make sure that you have that solid foundation with your advertising, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're adding new items like different custom creatives or different videos that you want to try. Yep. Um, we want to test these out early and make sure that they're fully optimized so when you actually hit that peak period you know they're running at full steam um, versus trying to line them out during that period and if you're doing yes. that it's already way too late and so the other piece that, that really ties into this too is if you have say upper funnel strategies mm -hmm. that are tying into this so if we're doing like brand building um, brand building takes time to lead to the sale yes. and so if we're approaching prime day and it's the week before and we really want to ramp up advertising ahead of the day mm -hmm. um, it, it in many times it's actually too late because you want to start much earlier Absolutely. and start getting people familiar with your brand so then when prime day comes around or those peak periods come around now they're ready they have you top of mind when they do that search for that product they see your brand they're familiar with it mm -hmm. but it takes some time to do um, so yeah. especially if you're implementing upper funnel strategies but, but overall any strategies that you're implementing like one it's going to take time to get people familiar with your brand yeah. but then two making sure that your campaigns are fully lined out before the peak period absolutely. when the traffic and the spend really ramps yeah. up is critical absolutely and even so much as speaking to the upper funnel like you were um, um, the different, if you're testing different audiences, which is fantastic, and I highly recommend whether you're doing it on DSP with in-market orders or you're doing it on the SD side with audience targeting, um, if you have multiple audiences running um, to try to test and see which wins, um, ideally you're on Prime Day or on that Prime Shopping Day uh, with the audience that you know is the known winner so that you're not, so you're able to fully allocate your entire budget towards that upper funnel strategy to the audience that knows you know is working. You're not allocating, you're not spending that budget on that Prime Shopping Day still trying to test and learn. So, so any other key updates that you saw from Prime Day that really worked well for those clients that saw a big uptick um, in sales? Uh, yeah, I would say that the key strategy that really worked um, that we took advantage of in, tra in helping the clients, clients to see their biggest success is um, we really... We really pushed harder on the products that they that were kind of like the hero products, and that's where we focused the majority of the increased bids. That's where we focused uh, the bulk of our budgeting as well. Um, these were the products that they really wanted to stand for, the products that most likely had the promotions behind them. Um, and so not so much increasing bids on um, kind of like supportive products outside of their hero products, but really focusing, yeah, increased bids on those hero products, making sure we did not run out of budget if that is aligned with their goal on those hero type products. Um, and also relying a lot on just the, the um, increased traffic naturally, I'd say was a, just a big win. Um, you know, Prime Day sees a lot of just organic natural traffic. So we knew that we were going to see a lift from that anyways. So not necessarily going overboard with increased bids, but just being mindful of there might, could be a step up due to the increase in competition there. So we do want to increase it slightly. Um, but again, not doing that same kind of strategy on more supporting uh, products. So it was more so 
prioritizing the products that were their hero products that they wanted to stand for um, and really, really making sure that we were there and supporting with budget. Yep. Yep. So key things and key learnings that we've had from previous prime days is that overall conversion rate, while it does sometimes step up a bit, um, it can actually be flat on average. Yeah. So a lot more people are coming in. There's a big increase in traffic, but overall um, conversion rate. So the probability that somebody purchases after a click mm -hmm. um, as an average typically doesn't see much of a step up. And right. so how we approach that is that for general bids, um, we tend to leave those pretty similar to what we've seen previously. Yep. Um, but then for any products that we know that are going through big promotions, um, those are going to see an uptick in conversion rate. And so for those, um, we can get more aggressive if we're aligned with the client on that. We have the margin to support yes. it. Um, so we can kind of do the dual approach of, all right, we're running a promotion. Let's also run ads more aggressively yeah. there so we can get the top spots, which are going to convert better. Um, and overall, that dual approach where it's not just applying a blanket bid adjustment right. overall, um, but it's really focused on those products that we know are going to see that uptick in conversion rate those we can get more aggressive yes. on um, and still see a solid advertising return. And then the, the other piece that Melissa hit on was really looking at overall budget. Um, and that's going to be the key thing as traffic increases, mm -hmm. making sure that your overall campaign budgets aren't running out. Um, that was a major focus and something that we were continually stepping through throughout the day to make sure that, all right, if campaigns are performing well, I think we're going to make sure that we don't want to we don't want to run out of budget halfway through the day with Prime Day. Absolutely. And it, it's more so even looking at your global budget uh, if you have a seller account but also the individual campaign budgets it was uh we saw a lot of um sell out throughout the day and it was it was key to be monitoring that throughout the day uh just to to make sure that you're not even just getting close, but you, you want to continue to make sure you're feeding that again, as long as it's aligned with your client's budget and, and objectives. Yeah. Sure. Um, and so what's cool is as we're coming up to Q4, we're at a ideal time to start preparing for that ramp up. Um, and then we also have a potential other prime day coming up that will kick off before Q4. Um, so a, a couple of different things to take into account is that for these days where people are expecting promotions, um, we'd expect the same approach where, you know, those that are running promotions, people are going to be shopping around for deals. Mm -hmm. And for those products that don't move up, on, don't move on price, people aren't going to have the urgency to increase or to, to purchase at that point. So conversion rates are probably going to stay the same. Um, but for those that do have promotions or can run promotions, um, we'd expect the same type of impacts where you could see a big step up right. on potentially the next prime day. If that does come around, starting to hear rumors on it. Um, and then for other days like Black Friday, these are other prime days to consider, not prime days, but key days, days to consider. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, to consider um, running promotions yes. if possible. Um, but then throughout Q4, really a key consideration is making sure that you have that solid advertising strategy in place up mm -hmm. front. Um, you, can, you can play around with different promotions as you go throughout Q4 and see what's working. Yes. Um, but I would also so differentiate between like the major days like Prime Day or say like Black Friday where people are coming in specifically looking for deals mm -hmm. versus those typical holiday shopping periods where people are just looking for those best products as gifts or items to purchase for themselves going forward. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And so other key things that I would really focus on is like what Melissa was saying is, you know, the planning has to start far in advance to make sure that you're getting your advertising lined out. Um, and so for this planning, like really it should be starting yes. now as you're preparing for Q4, because some of these items can take a little while to line mm -hmm. out. Um, if you need or are updating new custom creatives or no video assets, like now would be the time to start testing those up because traffic is really going to start ramping mm -hmm. up. And then as you get into these peak days, like, like the potential next Prime Day or Black Friday or Thanksgiving mm -hmm. time period, like th these are all times where you don't want to be trying to optimize at that mm -hmm. point. You want to have things lined out far in advance. Absolutely. 
I think, you know, now is really, really the perfect time to start planning for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all of Q4 in general. Um, you know, Prime Day is still so fresh in minds right now that I highly encourage analyzing your business. You know, I, I, I provided some aggregate level data. That's great. But everybody should do a deep dive into their own accounts and find out exactly what did work, um, what didn't. What were we what were we expecting to happen? Where did we fall short? Where did we succeed? How can we leverage that? Um, and if if you're not entirely certain how you're feeling about performance, then I would encourage you to, um, you know, just make sure that you're really, really formulating a very specific objective heading into Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Because like I said earlier, the more specific that you can get, the more strategic and the more niche that your PPC managers can get with their with their strategies and their campaign types. Um, so, you know, yeah, right now is really, really the prime time to be looking back. How did we do? And what do we want to do for go forward? Yep. Yep. So it's weird in August to start going through all this stuff, but now is the time yes. to really start planning. And those key dates are going to be coming up very yes. shortly. So now is the time to test, to get planning, to get those assets in place and yeah, really get set up for a successful Q4. Yes. So Melissa, really appreciate you joining the podcast and sharing your insights. Thank you. Um, and for those who have, those listening, as always, really appreciate you listening to the Ad Project podcast, and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.